Okay, so one of my catalytic coaching goals this year was to make this video to discuss um, CSS positioning as well as uh, the CSS float property. We're going to look at static, relative, absolute, and fixed positioning as well as float left and float right. Uh, we'll also take a brief look at uh, inline elements versus block elements. Um, the environment I'll be using, um, it's in Dreamweaver, and we're just going to use this single document, putting our styles here in the style tag, which is nested in the head tag, and then we'll put our divs here in the body tag. Uh, we're only going to use divs just in an effort to keep it simple. I think that's a good starting point. Um, and then I'm also going to try to use plain English in terms of the colors. So instead of a bunch of hex values, I'll use like orange, red, blue, you know, that kind of thing, so we can kind of see what's going on. Um, without trying to think too much about hex colors. So uh, first thing I want to do is look at um, the difference between block and inline elements. A lot of you already know this. This is going to be a review. But um, basically block, uh, block level elements, they require the full width available. So uh, a typical scenario uh, might be that um, th these elements are requiring... 100% of their parent or their enclosing container. Uh, that's a very common uh, scenario that you'll find. So examples of block elements would include um, like H tags, paragraphs, uh, lists. Um, in the design world, we use divs quite a bit. So it's important to understand that divs, they are um, requesting 100% um, of the width available. Um, if you ever wonder what the difference between a div and a span is, uh, that was one of the defining factors is that um, spans are inline elements and divs are block level elements. So inline elements, they um, have a width also, but uh, the width is driven by the content inside them. So like an anchor tag here, this would be like a link. Um, if it has more words in it, it's going to be wider. Um, it's image input, uh, small, you know, emphasis, these kind of tags. The content drives the width of these tags. Um, you can overwrite the uh, behavior with CSS, but it's very important to understand that they have these default values. Um, inline elements, one way to think of it is like if you're reading a book, you know, you start in the top left corner, and the words go along from left to right, and they reach the end of the page, they wrap to the next line. It's very similar. You know, you're going to stack these elements. These elements are going to naturally stack from left to right, and then when they reach the end of the available um, space, they just wrap to the next line. Um, so let's first take a look at um, static positioning. I'm not going to talk much about static positioning. Um, the best way to describe it is that static positioning is uh, the default uh, state, um, the, the default position that elements will take when they're placed on the page with no additional styling. So if you need to take an element and return it to um, its default uh, position, then static would be the style to use for that. Um, so let's just say we have some divs on the screen here. And I'm going to use IDs that correspond with their colors. So like I'll say this div has an ID of orange. And then I'll make its background color orange and so on. So I'll do like red, blue, like this. And then up here, I'll just say like the ID of orange. I'm selecting that element that has an ID of orange. I'm saying its background color is orange. And I'll do the same for the rest. OK, I also want to give every div um, some default styling so we can see it a little easier on the screen. So. I'm going to say every div has a border that has two pixels. It's solid black. Um, it has a border radius 
that has five pixels. This is rounded corners. It has a minimum height of 300 pixels. Save that. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got on the screen so far. Okay, so here we have an orange div, red div, and blue div. And um, as I showed you earlier with the block level elements, this is requiring 100% of the width available. And its parent container is body, and body's taking up 100% of uh, the screen. So if I were to come in here and give body a style and just say that um, body has a width that is only 50%, wide. Um, when I refresh this, they're still going to be requiring or requesting 100% of the body, but 100% of the body is only halfway across the screen. So they also are only going to go halfway across the screen. So it doesn't have to be um, the body tag. Maybe these are wrapped in a container that's also only going halfway across the screen or, or a certain amount, you know, even if it's by pixel, like maybe there's a container that's 800 pixels wide, well, they'll just require by default 100% of that, which would also be 800 pixels. So um, I'll go ahead and remove this, and we'll look at the behavior of inline elements. So let's say um, I'm going to change the way this behaves, and I want it to behave more like an inline element. I would say display inline. So all divs, this basically selects all divs on the page, and it's changing their display value from block to inline. We're kind of overwriting the default. So what's this going to look like? Now you can see there's no width to these. There's also no height to these. And it's because there's no content in them to drive that width or that height. So if we were to put something in here, you know, orange, um, red, save that, refresh, you would see that now the orange one has some width. It has more width than the red one because there's more letters in it. The content's driving the width. So, and um, as I was saying, it, it stacks from left to right, like as if you're reading a, a book or something. Uh, the, the third one here, it doesn't have any content, so it's still squashed, right? It's still got zero width. So that gives you an idea of the difference here between inline versus block. You can also say, I want this to behave kind of like both. I want inline, but I also want block. So this takes some of the attributes of an inline and some of the attributes from a block and kind of combines them. So in this case, um, normally inline would not obey um, the height, the minimum height here. So we wouldn't see this as 300 pixels high. Um, but since we're saying inline block, it'll still stack as if it's inline, but it's going to add this height. It's going to start obeying the height so let's refresh, and here we can see that it's obeying the height. And the same if we were to put width on this. Let me put some width, say 200 pixels, right? Refresh that. See, now we've got 200 pixels wide, 300 pixels tall, and yet it's still stacking from left to right. Uh, you'll notice there's a little space between here. That's a natural thing that the, the uh, inline elements will have. Um, you can fight that by, you know, hacking it, or, you know, you can take a different approach, which we'll look at here in a minute. But if I say margin right, um, negative four pixels, now I'm kind of hacking it. So, so I want these to go right up against each other like that. Let's see. But the other way to do it, a more appropriate way to do this, would be instead of display inline block, maybe you want to say float left. OK, so now let's look at this. There shouldn't be a change. Nope, there's no change. 
See, they're, they're um, right up against each other, but they're stacking from left to right. So um, I'm going to make these a little bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. Instead of zooming in, I think it'd be better to just adjust this. Okay, refresh. Okay, so what's happening here is that um, in our code, we start with the orange one, then we have the red one, then the blue one. So what it's doing is it's placing the orange one first. And the way floats work is they come in from the top um, and they come towards the left. So they're stacking from right to left. When they run out of space, they drop below and start stacking underneath. So if I adjust the window here, you can see that this blue one doesn't fit here, so it goes and wraps underneath. Um, let's, let's change this to float right and then take a look at that. Okay, so in this case, you'll notice um, the orange one, before it started orange, red, blue, and now it's blue, red, orange. It's like they got flipped. You know, what happened here? Well, if you look at um, the order at which we're doing this, we've got the orange one coming in first. And since we're floating right now, it's coming in from the other side of the screen like this, and it's stacking from left to right. So the orange one goes first, then the red one, then the blue one. You can also mix and match this so that you have some floating left and some floating right. So let's take the red one and float that one left. So if we look at our code, all the divs by default are floating right, but then we're kind of overwriting that on the red one. We're saying the red one should float left. So let's take a look at what happens. Okay, so the red one, what happens here, if you look at our code, we've got orange, red, blue. What happens here is that the orange one comes in and it's coming in from left to right, so it's, it sticks over here. And then the red one comes in and it sees that it has plenty of space to stay you know, flush with this one, so it comes in and sticks here. And then the blue one comes in after and it sees that it also has space, so it sticks here. Um, what happens if I resize this? Well, the blue one will drop below. And the reason is the orange one came in first and stuck. Then the red one came in and stuck. Then the blue one came in, but it saw that it didn't have enough room here. So it had to go down to the next line. So that's the behavior you can expect with, with floats. Um, suppose you want to keep this layout. You like this, but you want to have it on a larger window size. That's where clear comes in handy. So you can, you can force something to drop below, or you can force it to wrap by using clear. So you can say clear, right. We're, this, this blue element is coming in and floating right, so we want it to clear the right side. So if I do that and I refresh, you can see it will, it will even though it has room, it will clear the right side. Um, you can also use clear left, or you can say clear both. In some cases, you may want to say, look left and right and clear everything. Um, this case, it wouldn't have an, an impact, but in some cases, you would want to do that. Um, OK, so let's move on. We'll move on to absolute positioning next. Um, I'm just going to use one div for this. I'm going to remove the float here, and I'm going to say we're going to position this div absolute. Refresh. Okay, so here's our here's our block, and it is positioned um, absolute. So now we can introduce a couple new properties here. We can say top. Zero, left, zero. And what we're looking at here is the top left corner. Refresh that. You can see it went all the way up out of the body into the HTML. It basically um, is stuck in the top left corner now. Uh, and that's what we want. We can also stick it to the bottom left corner 
by uh, you can go by looking at the uh, the bottom here and saying I want to fix this to the bottom of the um, available container. So let's say change top to bottom like this. Refresh. Okay. You can also say not left but right. Okay, and you can also do a top right. So you say top zero, right zero. So that's absolute positioning. You can position things like that. And um, if, you, um, if you scroll, it just, it's to the, um, the container, so it's not going to scroll with you. That's fixed positioning. We'll look at that last. Um, next, let's look at... Um, uh, relative positioning. Okay, so relative positioning can cause some confusion. Relative, I think the best way to describe this is that um, it's relative to itself. So it starts out, if you don't define top or right or left or whatever, you don't define anything, you just say position relative, it's going to have the exact same um, position as static. So it's going to act the same as it did um, if you didn't have any styling on it at all. It just, you know, relative to itself, where is it now? Just let's start at, as that as our starting point. So um, if we look at it like that, then um, we can start moving it from, so this is where it is right now. So let's say we want to move it five pixels from the top. If I refresh this, you can see it moved down five pixels. Let me uh, exaggerate that a bit and say 50 pixels. You can actually see this thing working. Okay, so it's moved down 50 pixels from the top in this scenario. Now let's move it left. Let's say we're going to move it left 200 pixels. Okay, so now it is positioned here. And this has relative positioning. And it's um, 50 pixels from the top of where it normally would have landed. And it's um, 200 pixels from the left of where it normally would have landed. So. Uh, Let's put some absolute positioning divs inside this and take a look at how it behaves. So I'm going to say div ID is red. Okay. Then I'm going to say blue, pink, green. Okay. So we got red, blue, pink, and green. So let's add those to our let's add those to our list here. So first one's red, and I'm gonna put absolute positioned divs inside it. I'm gonna say the top is zero, left is zero, and the background color is red. And then I'm gonna make some copies and tweak that. So we have a red, we have a blue. Make sure I got this pink and green. We have a red, a blue, a pink, and a green. And now what I want to do is I want to put one in each corner. So I'll say top, zero, this will be bottom, so this will be top left, this will be bottom left, this will be top right, and this will be bottom right. Bottom, right. Save that. And then uh, one thing I want to do is make this a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller than we have here. So. The ones inside, I want them to be a bit smaller. So I'll just say 50 by 50. These will be like perfect little squares. 
we can actually, we don't have to say min height. We can just say hey, the height is this. So just say these are 50 by 50, okay? Let's refresh that and let's see what we have. Okay, I've messed up. Let's see where I messed up. Oh, okay, I do have to say min height because I'm using min height here. So we'll just say min height on these. Save that. Okay, so here we have red, pink, blue, green. Okay, so um, this is the behavior I was expecting. If I want to move this, they all move with it because uh, the orange one is relative. So relative kind of became the new um, like anchor for them to hold on to. These, these absolute, when you say uh, go to the top, it's going to look for the next relative a container and it's going to use that as its anchor. If it doesn't find one, it'll keep crawling all the way to the very top to where it reaches this HTML uh, element here. And so um, let me show you what that looks like. So for example, on this one, um, if I don't have relative on here, okay, and I refresh, you see what happened here is I've got, now they're, they're going all the way up to the HTML element and they're positioning themselves just like that. It's amazing what one little line like that can do. I want to change the scenario now so that this orange actually use, uses um, float left. So let's see what that would look like. Come over here to our orange div. And instead of position relative, let's just say, let's just say I have a float left on this. And um, here... Uh, okay, the reason I removed that is because float left, without that position relative, top and left, they mean nothing. So uh, top would become like margin top, and left would become margin left. So now it's using a float. It's a float instead, and it's saying uh, margin top, 50 from the top, margin left, 200 pixels from the left. So the orange one shouldn't go anywhere. Let's take a look. The orange one stayed where it was supposed to stay, but these other ones, they just, poof, they just went out. Why'd they do that? That can be frustrating sometimes. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I said position absolute. I put the top. What is going on? So it all goes back to um, these absolute positioned elements. They're, they're crawling up the DOM, and they're looking for the nearest uh, relative positioning. If they don't find it, they just keep going and going. So even though this has float left on it, I still have to just say its position is relative. If I do that, watch what happens. Boom, they all come back. So um, this can be frustrating, but if you understand that um, relative becomes the new anchor for these absolute elements inside it, then um, this will be helpful for you. Okay, one last thing I want to look at is uh, fixed positioning. And that basically, uh, it, it's looking at the viewport, the window, right? And it's saying, uh, let's, fix, let's fix our positioning to that um, and not worry too much about scrolling and all that. So let's say, um, let me erase all this. We'll go back to just one div. We'll go to the orange div. And um, just look like this. This is all fine. OK. The width, I'm going to leave it at 100%. That's fine. Refresh. OK, so here's our, here's our div. Um, since it's orange, I guess I should put my background orange back. Background color. Is orange okay so wh when would you want to use fixed positioning you know maybe a header and a footer in fact let's go ahead and do that let's make a header and a footer so we'll make the orange one our header and the red one our footer There we go. 
Now, we don't need this much height, maybe 100. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. All right. We also will not need a black border on it. We also will not need a radius on it. Let's see, let's see how we're doing now. Okay. We also need a little content in between the two. Um, let's just say text. And uh, I'll just make a bunch of these. And then I'll put like a, a line break. Just put a bunch of those. Okay, save that. Let's see how we're doing. All right. You can do even more. I mean, I know I could adjust the font size or whatever, but let's just put a whole bunch of them. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now the red one's way down here. The orange one's way up here. Um, so let's look at that. Let me go over here and just say the orange one is going to have a position that is fixed. And I want it fixed to the top and to the left. Okay. Um, the red one is going to be similar in that it's fixed, but I want it fixed to the bottom and to the left. Save that. Refresh. Okay, something happened. What happened? So what it is is that we've lost our default width, which was 100%. Um, with the fixed positioning, it just collapsed. And so uh, this can be a source of confusion. So let's just add width 100% back to it. Take a look at that. Here it is. So this is fixed to the viewport itself. So if I raise the window, if I change the size of the window, it goes with it. If I scroll, you can see the text is being scrolled within it. This is fixed positioning. So that's about it. I just wanted to have a quick little uh, video to share with you all. I hope you found it helpful in some way. And um, I look forward to making the next one. Thank you.